book. You know I've been out on this book tour and on I'm, the road. I'm, I'm in a different place every night. Right. What is it about people when you say at the beginning, not me, but somebody makes an announcement, when you come out for a speech, you're in a theater or you're in a big church or you're in a, some large assembly hall and somebody says, please make sure all your cell phones are shut off. Right. And then you're 30 minutes into your talk mm -hmm. and somebody's cell phone goes off. So obviously they had a brain freeze and they forgot they even owned a cell phone, mm -hmm. right? It just and, okay, they I didn't know. know I owned a cell phone. Now right. it goes off once. Okay. Now my theory is that they don't shut it off because they're panicked and they don't want anybody to know that it's them who has a cell phone. Mm -hmm. So they just sit like looking and listening to you as if I don't. Who's got yeah, it? who is it? Who's who's right. is that? Then it rings again. Right. And I'm sure those people are going. That's got to be the last ring. Sweat is coming right. down their arms. Please make that the last ring. There's another ring. Now, how are you handling this? Because like I said, in the comic world, that's gold for me. I got 20 minutes because I'm on it. I'm answering the phone for the guy. I'm calling the person back asking why you keep calling. So I'm on it. I'm on it. You know what I'm saying, though. Well, the first ring I just plow through. You plow through. The second ring, I take a, a semi-pause just so that they have some idea like, hey, I can hear that up here. The third ring, I might make a glance in the direction of where it's coming from. Right. And then if it's on a fourth ring, by that point I don't have to do anything because the whole audience right. See, has turned and they're tarring right. and feathering right. whoever right. that person Identify is. Identify the suspect in the second ring. Identify. Really? Identify. How do you do it in comedy? What do you do? As soon as I go, because in comedy people are drinking so they're pointing them out. It's right. this idiot right there. <laughs> I say, sir, give me the phone. Give me the phone. I take the phone and it rings again. I answer, hello? He can't come to the phone. Now he's in the middle of a comedy club and the act is going. Matter of fact, I'm like, I'm going to put the phone down. You can hear some of the act too, sir. And I just leave the phone. Let oh, you just ring. leave it on the stage? Take a couple of his minutes off because I'm taking 10 or 12 of his minutes away. And he, you know, the guy's panicking. I See, get it back to him. I need to be in a comedy world. You can do that though. So we're in Deerfield Beach, Florida at a restaurant called JB's on the Beach and there's no truth to the rumor that I only agreed to do this interview because I get to wear shorts in November and seeing as I live in Detroit that is a very rare occurrence. But I would have been here even in long pants because Dave Barry and Ridley Pearson are here. Dave Barry is extraordinarily funny humor writer in his normal job and Ridley Pearson, an extraordinarily talented thriller writer in his normal job, but they've collaborated to create a series of Peter Pan books for kids that actually tell the story of Peter Pan before he became the Peter Pan that we know. And to find out about that and a little musical thing that we happen to share together, we came down here for a little conversation. Uh, about seven years ago or so, uh, you guys decided to break from all the modes that you represent between thriller, crime, funny, newspaper, and you said, well, let's go pirate. Let's go pirate. pirate up. Let's go pirate. And then right after that, Johnny Depp. You know what I mean? That's the kind of trend-setting dudes and we I, are. There's no coincidence in that. He, I don't think he so. He stole your stuff. He stole it. You know. Ah. We got pirate. Er. I have to remember to put it on, on this side because I don't, you know, I so <laughs> you the, can't the actually only... see <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and if I have to read anything, <laughs> I have to put it on my... You need to have a pirate reading one. that <laughs> we, I think this is why there just aren't that you know, many... The bifocals were invented just after the iPad. I, got, the re I think the reason there are so few pirates left... <laughs> It's just really, it's the iPad. Like they were banging just, in yeah, exactly. stuff, falling off. It's like an accident waiting to happen, an iPad. Right? Like, the they walked right. off their own planks, <laughs> actually. Yeah, they had no yeah. depth for so They were always banging into yeah. the shore, yeah. you know? In truth, when Dave and Ridley go out to uh, bookstores and the kids are there, you actually do dress, you have to oh, dress yeah. up, which is a whole step beyond what authors normally <laughs> have to do, as if it's not hard enough to go to a bookstore. It's a Disney operation. This is one of the you big changes we, we found with writing books for kids, is that the audience involvement level is way, way higher. Up. Instead of just yeah. sitting there letting you tell them, they're like right, right on your, your face. Well, why why does the crocodile not go into the cave? What do you they know? eat when they're on the island? <laughs> like, yeah. how old is the porpoise? And I'm like, <laughs> I, whoa, I don't know. It really wasn't relevant to the plot how old the porpoise <laughs> right, is, right. but they want to know. They don't even know what a plot is. They so really, why you well, then you can give them any answer. Dave says the porpoise, 12 years old. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't think that makes sense. Then total they write sense. that down. Yeah. Yeah. And then a year from now, you'll be getting a letter saying, is the porpoise 13? Yeah, now? exactly. Peter and the Sword of Mercy is number four in this. Trilogy. <laughs> it's in the trilogy, in the slow walk up right. to where the most familiar Peter Pan story begins. Yeah. Now, 
should explain to the, the audience that this actually came from yeah, your came children. From, it came right? from That's where the idea my eldest came. daughter, who, when reading Peter Pan to her one night, asked how Peter had met Captain Hook in the first place. And, you know, as writers, we're always looking for ideas. And it occurred to me that we don't know how he can fly. We don't know why he never grows old. We don't know where the little personal assistant comes from. There were all these unanswered questions in the great classic. Maybe there was a whole book that leads a boy up to becoming Peter Pan. We thought we'd write a little 90-page right. explanation of this, you know. Now, I, I can remember, we, 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 we were, we were no. staying in my house because the, the band was playing, the band that you're a member of. And um, I remember at the time we thought, well, that'll take a couple months. Right. And we, you know, knock this thing yeah, off. Yeah, we'll a little, little side project. Ten copies, you know, you know five years now, later. So wait, this happened when the band was all together right. and the kids... Yeah, the band was playing in Miami. We, I came and you were down, staying over at Dave's house. I was Dave's maybe a week later and he said, what are you up to? And I mentioned this thing, the page, I said, you know, this idea came of a prequel for Peter Pan, and his eyes kind of twinkled. And you know, in the band, we don't talk business. I mean, it's just no. we're not what we do. We're too busy going, what was and, that chord? Right. <laughs> Fairly well, I know you're leaving. Sing it, Dave. <laughs> and it just occurred to me, I mean, he's wickedly funny, he's childish. Here I had this idea, and I thought, is there any way he would agree to do this? With It would make my job easier. I mean, it was yeah. really sort of a cop-out on my part. And he, he jumped in, so now it's all his show. You, now, know, you know Dave. All <laughs> the new look that you found. You change chords, no fair. Wait, here we go. That handsome guy that you've been dating. Hey, my I got a feeling he's going to put you down. Okay, What's everybody join in now. Together now. Were you like I was where you thought that children's authors were almost like another religion they wrote in a different language they and, had everything and they are i mean we that, met them this is the thing this was the one of the really weird adjustments for us was entering the, the world of children's book authors um because we we were like you know like you when you write a book for grown-ups i mean you want it to be good and you want them to like it and everything but partly you're thinking of it's kind of a business i'm you know i write a book they buy the book da -da -da -da, you know that's and, we're a couple of guys writing a book. Yeah, yeah. but in, in the children's book authors, is, there's this basically two camps. I would call it women and men. <laughs> and the women tend to be... The Wait, book. who's in the first camp? We're, we're, women? We're in, we're in the men camp. Okay. We, we try to sneak into the women camp sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> no. we're, but, they're, but they're like, um, you know, like it's all about kind of a, a message, message and right. teaching and, and resolving issues right. and so on. I think the men tend to be amateur guys right. <laughs> like, who like to write stories for kids. Right. Goofy the exception is J.K. Rowling, who I think wrote a guidebook kind right. of book. It's all plot, it's all action. She doesn't preach at all in, in the right. Harry Potter books. No great and that was kind of our inspiration, anyway. like, hey, you could write a big, fat, long book with a lot of action, a lot of plot, and just make it a good story. Right. Now, collaboration. Collaboration is, is First of all, collaboration in, in a band like we're in, that's a good thing, because it generally goes like this, I'm lost. Yeah. <laughs> we're good friends, and we get that. Um, so the, the actual physical process is, first we argue. Yeah. <laughs> but we're good friends arguing. Yeah, yeah. But we, we have like arguments like uh, about where we will literally, I literally said to Ridley once, and I was angry, and I wasn't kidding. A mermaid would not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Dead serious. Because I know the two of you, and yeah. if I, before you had, done this book, while I know you're good friends, I would not have picked your work habits yeah. to be right. the same, because right. Dave comes out of the newspaper world that I'm familiar with, it's like, I got five minutes, bang, 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 and I've been to your house and your office, and, and really when he starts getting ideas, three by five cards start going up with tax in them, saying, right. first the killer will unzip his jacket, then yeah. the gun will come out. No, maybe he'll unzip and first. Then, and but first he goes to the zipper factory <laughs> and learns, and, right, what kind of zipper, zipper is to stop me from doing but that's a, So that's, okay, that's a great approach for a really in-depth, you yeah, know, research Thriller. and organization <laughs> and, and and I am not a year ago my daughter she goes to, uh, to school in Miami and, and so she's in elementary school and as I'm walking her into school I see a girl walking down the sidewalk reading uh, our book with her mom guiding you know her. so yeah. she's walking on you know like it's really cool to see that she's so into That's it great. she's not even putting it down what she wants. so I'm gonna give this little girl a thrill you know and it's like I go up to her and her mom recognized me wave and I, I tap her on the shoulder and she looks up and I go I'm one of the guys who wrote that book. And she goes, oh. <laughs> didn't of course, if you were Peter Pan. <laughs> yeah. oh. She had no that interest in me at all. She was interested in, in the book. You probably did a lot of Peter Pan research just to get started. 
It seems to me, I can think off the top of my head, a lot of incarnations of Peter yeah. Pan. Yeah. There was a woman who played Mary Peter Martin. Pan, Mary Martin on Broadway Kathy over Rigby. and over. Kathy yeah. Rigby played Peter yeah. Pan, which still trying to figure Marlon that Brando, out. Marlon Brando, it was not his best role. Have you in a new direction. <laughs> Never, never gonna grow up. Uh, why should I grow up? I got a crow. <laughs> You're working your way up to where Peter Pan began, and the more books you want to produce, by mathematics, you have to go slower. Yes. Like the first book could That's encompass true. like five years in his life, and by the time you get to the ninth book, it's like just the breakfast. But okay, we actually have been talking about this. This book ends with a tapping on the window, which is where the uh, Jam Berry book begins. begins. So theoretically, we're done. We're there. However, where is Neverland today? Right Why now, haven't we found it. This this right. moment in the present. Where is it? I mean, if it were if it were real, where would it be? And and how come nobody knows? It would be mapped it? by now. Right. Somebody would have seen it. Satellite. Right. Whatever. Right. So that's, that was it. That became our idea for our. Don't tell anybody. Wow. Don't tell anybody. I won't tell a soul. He don't love you like I love you. He's trying to tear us apart. How about that? And the crowd goes wild. Wow. 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 Look at him. Wow. Look at him. Thank you. We're here all week. I said to Dave, there's the whole shadow thing. And he said, Ridley, that's two sentences. It's you know, actually the turned two books. And it turned into two 500 page books. So we wow. keep thinking we're done. You guys are milking a and, lot out yeah, of real yeah. things. But here. we don't mean to. It's, it's you know? become this whole world. I, yeah. Like I just, I compare it to like a I mean, The crocodile's got to be worth six <laughs> books in and of himself. Well, he has his own agent. Yeah. <laughs> we, can't, you know, we can't get him on the phone. <laughs> so it's like you were nothing. Your like finger was dead in the water. <laughs> Those two fans there yeah. that are face down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's Thank you. kind of a typical crowd. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. What's good on Saturday? Yeah, about? yeah. I, I, I think we actually put them <laughs> yeah. to sleep. I would, yeah, a, I would hate to wake them while up. While we were seeing that the ocean actually receded, even though the tide is supposed to be coming in. If Peter Pan, the whole concept of it, a boy who doesn't grow up, flies to a major city in the in the world, taps on the window of a teenage girl and her two brothers. Uh, and the window opens. Like, what happens in 2009 in that in that version versus when? Mm -hmm. When was Jane Barry's story? When well, Miami, the, the dad is on the lawn with a machine gun. You know, <laughs> exactly. so yeah, right. it was an innocent time. And the uh, the teenage girl's in front of the mirror. And she can't hear him because she's got her earbuds <laughs> yeah, yeah. in, like, and she's singing in front of the mirror. And he's, he, a tap <laughs> turns into a rap, you know. And, and then, then the burglar alarm goes off. <laughs> <like. laughs> the two brothers are on their Nintendos, and they're they they do not hear a thing, you know. Uh, and, and, and they, they don't smell another book. Yeah. But we do have this band, the Rock Bottom Remainders, going, getting close to 20 years up eventually, there. Yep. Uh, which uh, all three of us are a part of, and we've become friendly as a result of. And I do have to say, um, it ha it is a bit of a like a club that we don't ever feel like it's some kind of special club to be in, because we basically it's a total open door policy. The mistake a lot of authors make is they'll say, I really want to be in the band. I'm really good at, you know, whatever. And we go, you're out. You're out. Excuse yeah. me, <laughs> have you ever heard our right. band? Now your band in high school. Was, uh, my band was called the Federal Duck. Federal Duck. Mine my, was Big Lost. Big Lost. They were more country. My, mine was the Lucky Tiger Grease Stick Band. <laughs> nice. And that we was like a marching band. band. That was a hair gel yeah, thing that you yeah. put on and, and then your hair wouldn't move in a hurricane. Not at all. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And we played 50s music, which is how I learned every single 50s song. And, and I will came confirm that you know, every, you know everyone. every word and every chord and every song ever recorded in the 50s. That's right. Including not just the 1950s, the 1850s. <laughs> and the 70s. Any 50s. 50s. Any 50s. <laughs> uh, Dave found me in Norway. It's correct. Um, under a pile of snow. <laughs> no, we were, we were a little hummer. I was looking for a lap dog. Mitch and I were both writing <laughs> columns about the, the Norway Olympics. Right. And one night, <clears throat> we were both working late. And we went down to the uh, reporter's lounge downstairs, and there was a piano. And Mitch right. goes, I play piano. He sits down. And we immediately discovered we both like to play old, sing old songs. So we, we started out with just me and Mitch, just you know, pl playing. And before we knew it, there must have been 50 Norwegians, the whole staff, because we were the most soulful two guys in, in Norway. Norway. <laughs> Which we still hold that title. The most soul music ever heard in, in one night in Norway. Yeah. And we, we sang, we taught them how to sing. Yeah, we sang. And 
Na 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 That is no such chord. What the hell? <laughs> what is that? Like people. That is a C minor, my friend. Oh, I can do a C minor. That's a C minor. We've just discovered a new chord. It's, it's not a C minor. F9. That's not a C minor? No. That's an F9. This is a C minor. Right oh, wait. There it is. There's That's a C minor. That's a C minor. Do you love <laughs> That's exactly. Love that's how they do you. The Beach Boys do. Do, do, do. I always wanted to play sort of near a beach. In the 60s, there were an awful lot of bands playing on beaches, you know, now that they never with made nothing it. plugged in. Wait, nothing plugged in. Say, nothing there was never, and nobody was dancing. All dead. the girls were in those That's kind right. of large bikinis. Yeah. Sad thing is, best we've ever done it. That's the end to uh, a <laughs> completely, <laughs> completely different song. <laughs> Here we come, walking down the street. We get the funniest looks from everyone we meet. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys, and people say we monkey around. But we're too busy singing to put anybody down. We go where we want to, do what we like to do.